Hi, Scissor in here, and I wanted to talk to you about flasks, specifically utility flasks, because, I don't know, I think I might have a separate video covering all the unique flasks if that, because, you know, there's a lot, they're very build specific, and, uh, yeah, utility flasks are actually incredibly strong. I always say that the number one thing a new Path of Exile player fucks up is jewels, as in things like these, well, okay, I don't have any rare ones, I have one in my belt. Jewels and flasks, that's what new players fuck up the most. And whenever I'm doing my Sunday Roast build review thing, I feel like a large, large amount of players are fucking up their flasks where I'll see something like, I've sometimes seen three life flasks, two mana flasks. I've sometimes seen two life flasks, two mana flasks, and a quicksilver. Um, and I really wanted to put a stop to that because it's not okay. Uh, so, uh, let's, let's make a, uh, I should have a Divine Life Flask here too. And, uh, let's, let's make a quick video about the regular flasks and how powerful they are. Because they are very powerful. Somebody will be like, Zizzard, hey, I'm doing tier 16s and I'm struggling with survival. And I'll say like, slap on a grade and a date. And they're like, that did it! I'm immortal! Poggers. Let's talk a little bit about flasks, explain them, and what you should use, why, and how, and when. So, let's start with the what most people keep in slot 1, a life flask. I usually always only use one life flask, and that starts as early as around 28. Uh, most people maybe prefer two life flasks early on in the campaign, and that's okay. But uh, for mapping, you should probably not have two life flasks. Something else I see people do is they don't roll their flask well enough. You can use currency on flasks. So, that that is amazing. Not everybody knows that, but now you do. So you can roll them. Uh, you can bobble them where they're white. Right, then it costs four, costs four, glass bar bubbles. And now you can roll it. What are you rolling for though? So I normally keep either bubbling or seething. Um, the new low life builds can keep uh, panicked, but I would never use panicked on a full life build. They only work when you're fifty percent and below, and it's so easy to get one shot from that. So I always make sure that I have either a bubbling or a seething. And the reason that we do that is because you're very, very rarely getting killed slowly over time. You're very rarely degening and you're like, oh no, I'm dying, even through my life flask. So because of this, instant life flasks are incredibly powerful. Normally what happens is you take a big chunk and then another chunk and you're dead. Being able to like instantly flask back up, screaming to your friend on Discord, holy shit, I almost died. Uh, but you saved yourself by flasking up to full. Honestly, like, I just wanted to make sure I talk about instant life flasks because I feel like I see so, so many times that people don't have them. And, and what affix should you have on a instant life flask? So early, you just roll whatever, right? It doesn't matter what it has. You just want to make sure it's instant. But whenever I get a choice, there is the debate whether should you have bleed removal or should you have freeze removal? This league in particular, bleed removal, is something I always keep on an overtime flask. Because I want to make sure that I'm, my character never experiences bleeding or corrupting blood of any form. Because it's so incredibly dangerous. We've seen people die to things like the, the Rigwald boss where he just like, sh like just vaporizes your life. Uh, and you might not have time to use your instant life flask with bleed removal. So I, I always do it on overtime. And that's another thing with me being a streamer. Sometimes I'm reading chat and I might not discover um, the fact that I'm bleeding. So I would rather have freeze immunity because, you know, I'm, I'm probably realizing I'm frozen very quickly. I've usually clicked the strong box. The, the big downside of having uh, freeze immunity on a divine life flask is chilled ground. It feels awful. Kind of want to just reroll old chilled ground maps because they are so slow. Um, so that is the downside, but either one of those, whichever one you prefer, they're either fine. Let's look at the other one. So we can start with Jade and Granite. They are like the two most important flasks, in my opinion, closely followed, or maybe even Quartz might be the most important. But let's talk about these three flasks. So Jade, this is a really incredibly strong flask from pretty much any character. It's really, really good for dealing against porcupines, which are the, uh, the quill porcupine things that just, they explode and you've probably died to them. Um, the, these are a really, really good defense against those. And uh, Jade is obviously, well, mandatory if you're playing a trickster. But for so many builds, just very, very good defense against uh, monsters. 
and it's really really good because this doesn't matter if the attack is elemental or if it's physical it just matters that it's an attack it doesn't help against spells but it's really really good for everything like that and you'll like this character has well no evasion 500 and getting 3000 more is just very very nice for those small attacks and as for the prefix i normally always try to roll chemist on all of mine that makes them very very easy to keep up i'm not a big fan of duration because i smash my flasks too much anyway i smash them way too much so i will never intentionally roll duration because i don't wait that long i usually over flask incidentally all of mine have duration right now but chemist is the preferred one that's the reduced flask charges and chemist is actually uh needed on both the basil flask and the silver flask for it to have two charges without it has one charge and it needs to be 23% reduced. Next up, let's talk about armor. And there is another flask that does fist reduction too called the Basalt. So when do you use it and why and when do you switch? So granite gives you armor. It gives you 3,000. It used to give 6 and before that 10. Uh, but they've nerfed it. It's now down to 3,000 armor. And that is still very, very good. Armor will basically protect you a large amount from white trash. Like, the white monsters will hit you for so much less. It's very noticeable on an uh, armor character or not armor character. And it's very good for characters using things like Molten Shell. So if I go to my hideout now, you can see that my Molten Shell is 2,496 armor. That's with my current uh, 9k. And if I pop on a Granite Flask, it makes it 5,800. That's because it has percentage armor and, you know, it is armor itself. So it's a very, very big difference for things like Molten Shell. Um, and, uh, you know, it's you'd probably use one on most Molten Shell characters. It's also, you know, Rumi's is a Granite Flask as well. That's important to remember that you don't use like two. Because Flasks don't stack. You can't use a Rumi's Granite and this Granite. However, Basalt Flask, this is really, really good for, for example, physical degens. It's good for boss slams. Like say like Vol or Vol Oversoul is slamming you. You might die anyway. But a Basalt Flask is what would like help make you survive that. And Endurance Charges. Because they are percentage physical, physical damage reduction. Um, this stat here saying 67% physical reduction. That's not true. That doesn't matter at all. Like it doesn't give you percentage physical reduction at all. And, and verbatim, it's there's a hidden mechanic where armor only runs at most 10% of the armor rating as reduction. So 25,000 armor will never mitigate more than 2,500. Um... So, you know, it's not particularly great for very, very large hits. It's mostly meant at uh, removing small hits. So it's still good, but you gotta, you gotta know when to use it. So, you know, tier 16s and stuff, or tier, tier 10s and higher, Basil Vals becomes really, really good for a character that does not have a lot of mitigation. So frequently, I will use a Jade and a Basil. And do remember that a Basil Vals needs 23% reduced to be able to get two charges. Quartz is incredibly strong. It's kind of underrated and has maybe not been used as much as it should for a while. Um, but you'll see a lot of uh, veteran players will use this a large amount. And what it does is it gives you phasing. And phasing means that you can run through monsters. And this is incredibly strong because if you watch through my Rift playlist, you'll see sometimes very early our characters that couldn't fit a Quartz class, they will sometimes die by getting stuck. They will get stuck on some monsters and then maybe like 15 monsters are all hitting you at the same time. So just by being able to phase through everything and run, you are actually very, very safe. And on top of that, it also gives you 10% dodge and 10% spell dodge. So obviously very, very useful in characters that are fully spiked into dodge, but just generally very, very good. And with all of these flasks, you do get like a suffix. You can have bleed immunity, curse immunity, freeze immunity. Um, the most important one to have is freeze and bleed. After that, you want to have curse immunity, and after that, shock immunity. Um, but obviously, especially if you're a softcore player, shock immunity isn't that important because you, you're not going to die to it that much. It's not that important on softcore. Silver flask, obviously, fairly easily replaced with a uh, searching our murderous jewel that has onslaught on kill for a lot of characters. Some ascendancies give you onslaught as well. But if you don't, like sometimes on characters, you just want to get an onslaught fast to get your onslaught up there. Again, this needs 23% reduced, but uh, getting the extra speed can be nice. Quicksilver, this is also the only flask where I will sometimes roll an alchemist quicksilver of adrenaline, which means that you do have to kill and play a lot faster to keep it up. 
But, you know, if the Quicksilver's not down, I'm not gonna die. Whereas Coronet and Jade, they can directly lead to my demise if they're down. Most people probably want to play with a Chemist Quicksilver of Adrenaline, but if you are, like, boosting and really, really fast, Alchemist Quicksilver of Adrenaline is very, very fast. That's how you see so many players are incredibly fast. Maybe it seems a little too fast when you're new. And finally, we also have Sulfur Flask, which is actually pretty good damage. It basically gives you 40% increased damage, some life regen from the Consecrated Ground, and um, it's really, really good. Because sometimes we'll see players like Essence Drain players use uh, which fire brew should never use this because the if you're using it for boss fights well then you have the flask for 10 seconds and it didn't really do much to begin with right you could rather you're better off self cursing and for killing normal things the witch fire brew is like this radius and most of the monsters you kill are like half a screen away so i never recommend witch fire brew except for one build and that's when you're using plague bearer and then witch fire brew is pretty much best in slot but either way the power of having like an immunity to something is very very strong so you do only want to give up the utility flask for really, really strong, unique flasks. Um, and this is another thing where while while getting like ailment immune characters is so strong because then you can start using your um, affixes on flasks for other things like cast speed, percentage armor, or things that you don't need to be immune to. So that's really good. And another thing that I almost forgot, enduring mana flask is very, very good. If you roll it as enduring, even though you're full mana, it'll still work. So that'll help you, like, never run out of mana. Very, very important that if you're going to use a mana flask, you probably want it to be enduring. Hope you guys enjoyed this video about flasks. Hope it helped. And uh, if you guys want, I was thinking about maybe doing, like, a steel skin, immortal coal, when to use, why, what video next. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below. Sub if you liked the video. More importantly, try to die less than I do.